Hello again! Here's a little fish plate I painted for Miniature in Tune. As we're setting up a new foundation, we need some money to uh, pay for the new foundation, uh, for the notary costs and all that. And um, it's money we don't have, so we thought we'd, it would be a good idea to have an auction. So what we did is we asked all the students to make something or bring something that we could sell uh, in a little auction. And I made a fish plate. I painted it in three different blue colors and here it's going into the kiln for the third time, third firing. And um, after this it's finished. The temperature of the kiln is ramped up in several steps until it reaches 800 degrees centigrade or Celsius I should say and um, then I hold it there for 20 minutes or so and then it's stepped down again to cool down and that takes a long time, several hours. And here you can see inside the kiln with the little plate there and it's red hot. And I always like to see that. This is the little fish plate I painted for the Miniature in Tune auction. I hope someone will like it enough to put in an offer for it. And uh, hopefully it will make a little bit of money for the new Miniature in Tune foundation. I really wanted to show you this website and this is William R. Robertson's website or Bill Robertson as we know him. And uh, here he shows us his beautiful work like this chest. I, I love this piece. And also this classroom is one of my favorite pieces ever. Um, um, and lots of other things. And if you click on the gallery, you'll see all these pieces um, explained in detail and this is <laughs> this is the spice cabinet I showed you last week the one that I hadn't finished yet the class I took and um, you can click on all the photos and you get a much better view and I really suggest that you look at this website because <laughs> it's so beautiful there's his work is fantastic but what I really wanted to show you is this, because Bill made this um, house, or two of these houses, Twin Manors. Um, when was that? He made it in the 80s, I think. Yeah, here. Built in the 80s. And um, he's selling one, and he's selling it with complete with all the contents, as it says here. And again, you can click on all these, or no, not on this one, but there are a lot of, oh, you can zoom in here on the top. You can zoom in on all of the photos and um, have a really close look at everything. And there's lots of descriptions. And here is a needlepoint by his mother, for instance. And, um, you know, detailed drawings and everything and it's really beautiful but I I really loved seeing all of this and um, if you have the money and I don't know how much it will be but I'm sure it's six figures somewhere um, you know have a look make an offer uh, yeah and look here it says um, all the furniture by some of the artisans uh, and there's more in there so have a look at his website it is www.robertsonminiatures.com and uh, look all these pieces in detail it's a really fantastic website so have a look and you'll be able to spend hours here <laughs> if you're bored or if even if you're not bored. Um, yeah. Beautiful.
Oh, and by the way, speaking of Bill Robertson, I did find my, I think it was called the wine decanter uh, in the class I did with Bill um, some time ago, <laughs> several years ago in June. Um, and as you can see, I'll just pick up my camera in the box. It's not quite finished yet. There's a lot of things. Uh, we turned a lot of pieces on the lathe. Um, uh, there's a piece of a handle, I think. Not sure what what some of these pieces are supposed to be. Um, I'll have to read my class description. <laughs> and um, I do think I have everything. I think I made all the elements. And I just have to finish them, put them to get together. And this is supposed to go between there and then, oh, <laughs> or the other way around. And then there's a little, that goes up. And there's a handle on on the end here, which you also found. There's the handle. And then you turn it and um, once it's attached, then the auto moves, oh, moves up or down. Oh, it's not a very good video. Uh, it moves up or down. And um, I think it's meant to either um, very slowly move the bottle so that the deposits in the wine are left in the on the bottom, or there was something about um, that. Can't, I was going to say heated, but that's cognac. That's not wine. I thought it was for wine. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> well, this is a very messy video. Um, but that's the... These are the kind of classes I really enjoy. Um, it's hard, but I've learned so much. Um, and uh, that's what it's all about, I think. Not so much about the end product, product but about learning techniques and then being able to do that at home yourself. Oh, and all these pieces, they un unscrew as well. I don't know if you can see that. These are all screws. And we turned all that on the lathe, which was pretty cool, I must say. To do all that. So oh, that's a better. Now you can see, I think, what it's supposed to look like. So yeah, not finished. Um, it will happen one day. And this is what I've been doing all week. Not miniatures, but directly related to miniatures because I've been behind my computer screen making floor plans, daily schedules, all kinds of forms, name tags, signs, etc., etc. And all of this is for Miniature in Tune. But I think I'm done. <laughs> I have everything now. At least I hope so. And... Um, I can start backing this up. Dana asked me in the comments how I travel with my tools and how I pack for the classes I'm taking. Well, so far, well, I've only traveled uh, two classes by plane twice. So I usually travel by car. And I use this small tool chest or toolbox that I have. It's a metal one. Well, you 
You've probably seen similar ones. I've had it for many years and it's filled with stuff that I use a lot when I take classes. So here's a lot of my files and I keep them in there all the time so I know where they are. And uh, uh, this time I won't be needing them so I don't know if I should bring them. Although it's always good to have one or two things with you. But these big ones, I don't, I won't be needing that here, sharpening stone. Um, and these, well, I'll be taking those because I'm actually doing a FEMO class, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm not a clay person at all. I don't really enjoy working with clay, but I thought it would would be good to do some something I don't usually do. So, but these are tools for working in clay, so I'll keep those. And as I'm not really worried about weight, I just bring a lot. So, um, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's for this. This is for holding items, small items, which I always have to have. And um, here's just some things, pens and clamps, a few clamps, a ruler, pencil sharpeners, small hand drills. And this is just my, this is just standard in my, it's getting old, it's not working as well as it should. <laughs> what is stuck? My drawer is stuck, it's a good thing I'm checking this. <laughs> Something's going on. That's not straight. But anyway, the, the, the last drawer also has very small saw blades, um, these sharp uh, markers, uh, just calipers, some uh, files. Actually, they're nail files, but um, and this, like I said, I I I always bring this stuff because I usually I do a lot of the same type of classes, and as I said, I don't have to worry about weight that much, so I like to just bring. Uh, I have to check. <laughs> I have to. Something's going on here. There's something wrong with this drawer. I'll have to check that later. And maybe then I'll have to bring something else. But um, as I said, I'm taking a FEMO class and that requires different tools. So I'm going to look at what I need and what I have to bring. So here's the email with the tool list for my class. And it says, I need a craft knife fine point tweezers, I'll get those, small container of water-based craft glue that dries clear, any brand will do, preferably with a fine dispensing tip, but any tip is okay. Um, whatever small work surface you like to use or can find, usually, well, ceramic tile, I'll see if I have one of those. Extra, extra magnification, I do need that. Um, and uh, battery-powered lighting. Well, I don't have battery-powered one, but I have an extension cord and an extra extension plug outlet. I don't know what they're called, um, which I'm going to bring. Um, and then a toothbrush. Well, I'm bringing a toothbrush, but I don't think I want to use the same toothbrush, so I'll bring an extra one. <laughs> I'll just go get those things now. Well, I think I've got everything on my list here. Um, craft knife, and actually I'm bringing this one as well with uh, some surgical blades, 
because I like working with that. Um, fine point tweezers I needed and I'm bringing the tweezers I really like as well. <laughs> what else? A small container of water-based glue and I just put some tacky glue in there and I'm bringing that big one as well just in case. Um, and I still had a little stand because it's so annoying if uh, the glue doesn't come out. Um, what else? Oh yeah, a, a work surface. So I found a tile I can use. Actually, that's the tile I, I mix my porcelain paints on. Doesn't matter. And um, yeah, extra magnification. So yeah, bringing this. And I'm also bringing an, extens an extension cord and one of these. So whoever's sitting next to me can also plug in their light. And my work light, actually that's a daylight lamp, which I really like. So that's it. Ah, uh, yes, of course, and the toothbrush I needed. <laughs> And I'm also bringing some scissors and some sculpting tools that I have. Well, actually, they're dental tools that my dentist gave to me and my friend. Um, but I tend to use those a lot. And now I have to pack it. And, well, that was a problem. <laughs> so I decided to get an, another box because uh, this is just going to be so annoying. If I won't be able to close or open those drawers, so I just I'm just going to bring a plastic box, <laughs> and I'll figure out um, a new or maybe fix it or get another one uh, for traveling, another um, toolbox for traveling after I get back. But um, pencils, I don't think I'll be using that. But I'll just bring a few clamps. You never know. And these toothpicks are always good. I don't know what that is. I don't think I'll be needing any of those things. So I'm not bringing my drills. I, I usually like to bring... Uh, these are always good to bring. I like to bring lots of stuff so in case someone else needs something, I have it. Um, so in this this case, I won't be having any extra tools for anyone. Maybe a pen. I don't know if that, that, that's working. I hope so. I'll check it later. Um, I have pencils there. Sharpener I don't need because I'm not. And then I always like to have one of those. A little bit of glue. Extra glasses. And here's another pair of extra glasses. These are strong ones. And well, who knows? That might be good. Um, little screwdriver for. Who knows? Some more sculpting tools. Take those glasses. Put those in the box. Okay, put the cla glasses in the box. And then also I'll be bringing some paper for, you know, spill and toilet paper is fine. Just for uh, spills or, you know, cleaning up some glue or whatever. I think that's helpful. And also I'll be bringing some of these gloves for... You never know. <laughs> they don't weigh anything and don't take up much space. So uh, 
bringing those as well. And I think I'm pretty much there then. I brought a box for putting my um, projects into. Um, maybe I can bring some bubble wrap as well, just to keep it, keep it safe. Here we are. That's it, I think. Maybe I'll come up with something else tonight, but um, for now, I think that's, uh, I should be fine. Oh, a notebook. Um, bring something to write uh, notes in and uh, pen and paper, or pen. <laughs> the notebook is the paper. Here's the notebook I use for many of the classes I've been to. Um, not all, but some. <laughs> Bill Robertson, Tine Kreine, um, Chris Malcolmson, and uh, here's Jens Torp's class once, David Hurley, etc. So um, I bring the notebook, write down interesting or things that I, you know, might forget. So now I think I'm done. Just a lid and I can put it in the car. Do you recognize this? I decided to give myself a belated birthday gift. And um, it has arrived today. So I'll show you. It is, there are more flowers. Beautiful. <laughs> it's like opening an, an Easter egg. Look at that. So little nest of flowers. Aww. So beautiful. Ah, love them. Love those different colors too. Beautiful. <laughs> And there's another one. Ah, oh, look at those peonies. Peonies. Ah, oh, I love those. And I have these in my garden. And um, they actually start off in, I think probably these are the same ones. They start off pink and you can actually see some of the pink in there. And then they fade or change color to this lovely soft yellow. Ah, they're beautiful. I really, really like them. So... Thank you, thank you, thank you. And another yellow rose as well. Love that. And of, oh, I forgot to say that. Of course they are from Floral Decor Mini. So thank you, Yevhenia. And um, as you've probably seen in my previous vlog, uh, Yevhenia is from Ukraine, hence the colors of the Ukrainian flag on the ribbon of the parcel. And she's currently residing in the Netherlands with her daughter. So um, I like to support her a little bit in this way. And of course, I absolutely love her flowers. So go and see her Etsy store and uh, 
maybe you can buy something from her as well. Now, by the time this vlog is published, I'll be on the road driving to Denmark. And I hope to be able to show you some of that in next week's vlog. So, see you next time!